Hey everybody, it's Debbie O'Neill of Scrap Me Quick Designs and the Let's Learn Cricut Explore Facebook group. And I am going to talk to you guys about the new Cricut cartridge that came out on May the 19th. It's called Simple Pop-Up Cards. And there are a lot of questions about this. It has some really cute images. We're going to look at all this in just a moment. But if you go to... Um, Cricut.com, you'll see that the cartridge is available for purchase, and the, it's called Simple Pop-Ups, and if you scroll down, you'll see that it says you can buy the cartridge, So, and you see that it says that I already own it. I already own this cartridge because it is part of the Cricut Design Space subscription. Isn't that awesome? So if you have Cricut Design Space, you already have access to use this awesome cartridge with 30 pop-up cards on it. Now, the other question that I'm getting is, I need to see the handbook. And the handbook has not been loaded yet into the Cricut handbook page. It will be. They're working on that. But if you want to see the handbook right now, just go to Cricut.com go to new and then so like new cartridges and you'll be able to scroll down and pull up the simple pop-up card cartridge and when you do that scroll down to this view so you're in Cricut.com in the shopping cart right go down and down here it says resources digital handbook when you click on digital handbook it brings you up to the simple pop-up card handbook okay so that's how you can access it right away if there's any if you ever go to look for a cartridge um, handbook in the handbook link and I'll put that out there in case you guys don't know about that all of the Cricut cartridges all have handbooks and they have a they have a file that has them all on there for you to access occasionally um, it takes a few days sometimes to get the new handbooks put out on that system so if you get excited and you already have a cartridge and you don't find the handbook for it, let's say you downloaded digital cartridges. A lot of us that use Cricut Explorer are just downloading digital cartridges, right? You always go to that shopping, to the Cricut.com shopping site and find the cartridge and scroll down and almost always the digital handbook is already loaded and ready there. So that's how I found the simple pop-up handbook. So let's just take a real quick look at this cartridge. Um, and as you can see, a pop-up is a, is it makes it a three-dimensional shape. All right, and it has thirty cartridges. Uh, thirty cartridges it has thirty shapes, and I just zoom this out so you guys can see them better. Okay, so they're really adorable. There's all different kinds here. Surely they would there would be something here that you would think is adorable. I've already made several of them and started posting them, and a few other people have as well. Um, this is really an unusual shape one, too, because instead of it being a traditional card shape with a pop-out, it's actually the um, it's a cutout image that's a pop-out, so that's kind of fun. Um, and anyway, so you'll see, so those are the 30 cards. And then for each card in the handbook, you would scroll down and be able to see what uh, each of the images, all right? In Cricut Design Space, um, you obviously will see that um, the images, and we'll go look at that in just a minute. But on, in the handbook, you'll see the image, and you'll see that there's an envelope. There's an envelope for each card, which is really nice. And then there's the light, whatever layers that you get for that card. So there's the card base and then the layers. And what I wanted to point out, and people, this is something that everybody keeps asking about, is in the hand, in the Cricut handbook, when it shows you what size, that's what these little red marks are on your handbook, and it says five and a half inches or 14 centimeters, this is the height of your card when it's completely made, when it is actually made. So whether it's the image shape or it's the card shape, it's supposed to be five and a half inches tall, right? Hi. When you go into Cricut Design Space, if you put five and a half inches as the height, 
you're going to get a little teeny tiny card because in Design Space, your the, the, all the files open up completely flat. Okay, so let's go look at that now. I'm going to go into now. I'm in Design Space, and I'm going to go into Insert Images, and I'll show you guys how to find the cartridge. So. If you have the subscription, this is how you would find it. If you need to purchase it, you do that through Cricut.com. And I'll have a link to purchase the cartridge if you want to do that. Anyway, so you want to go to Cartridges to find it in Design Space. And that will take a second. And then over here, it's called Simple Pop-Up Cards. Okay, I'm just hitting Enter. It's going to pull it up. When it does this, you're going to need to scroll down because what it's done is that when you put something in the search feature, it pulls up things that have those words in it. It doesn't pull up just that one cartridge. So you do need to scroll down. I had a few people say, it, I didn't pull it. It didn't pull up for me. Um, it did. You just didn't scroll down far enough. So you need to go down to where the S's are here. And we will see it. And there it is. Simple pop-up card. And over here, you'll see that um, this is how you access it. And notice that it says subscribe. So it is part of the subscription for Cricut Design Space, which is nice. So I clicked on that, and that brings up my images in Design Space, right, in the screen for me to look at. And let's see. I have this one to show you that I've already made, so I'm going to pick this one. It's really cute. It's got this note. It's Songbird Pop-Up Card is what they call this one. And I'm going to click on this and add that to my screen. Alright, now when I add this to my screen, I'm going to go up here and turn on my grid just so you guys can get some perspective of what this looks like opposed to the grid. Each of the grid lines here marks off that it's one inch, okay? So when you bring this into Design Space, look how tiny it is, okay? It's small. The handbook told us that it needs to be 5 inches. When I looked it up, it said 5 inches. Well, if you put this at 5 inches, let me just show you. If I, if I go to height and I put this at 5 inches, okay, that card is still going to be really small, all right? Because in Design Space, remember, any of our images that come in are co opened completely flat. So notice that with the card, it actually has a has a score line here. So this card will be folded in half um, to, to make the completed card shape. So if you have it at 5 inches, that means that it's only going to be 2.5 inches this way to the fold, and then 2.5 inches from here to the fold. That's going to make a really tiny card. And um, because of all the detail cuts up here that are part of this card image, you are not going to be happy with the way that looks. It's going to be really hard for it to cut that some of these that small and uh, out of card stock and for you to be able to then fold this card up. It's just not going to work for you. Um, so what you need to do is anytime it says whatever the dimension is for the height when you do a card, you need to double that, okay? So we're going to go over here. So if it told us in the handbook that this one is supposed to be 5 inches, that's the recommended size. That means the recommended height for that card would be 5 inches. You can make it bigger than that and maybe a little bit smaller than that, but I wouldn't go too much smaller than what Cricut recommends because that is the optimal size that when they design that card what it's supposed to be. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to change this to 10 inches, okay? So what I've done here, what I've done here is I have doubled the size of the card, all right? So I took that measurement, and I've got this down to the card is 10 inches. Let me zoom out just a little bit so you guys can see this. Okay. So now I've zoomed my mat out, and I did that by just clicking the, the zoom over here. But if you can see this down the side, the, this goes so that my card is now 10 inches long. So that means it's going to fold. When I fold this in half on the score line, it'll be 5 inches up here and 5 inches down here. So that's going to make my card a 
and then when I count over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, my card will be a five by seven card, which is a standard card size. Okay, so that's how you size it. Now notice that when I did the sizing, I left my image grouped. The reason why I did that is because this card, all the cards in this pop-up card, uh, simple pop-up, has a matching envelope. And if you ungrouped your image and then tried to size your card, it's, you have to do a few more steps to be able to get your card size, your envelope size. So what you want to do is size it to group, still group together the same way it came in, just like you guys just noticed me, how watch me do it. And I put 10 inches in, so then that made this card the right size. It also sized the envelope the right size. Okay? And now I can send this to um, print it out. I mean, not print it out, cut it out. Um, I can also ungroup this if I wanted to in the layers panel, if I wanted to do that. Um, but right now, if I send it to if I send it to go, it is going to cut the card. See how it's this is the this is the liner of the card shape, and then and it'll and you use your score tool. When you go to the next thing, it's going to cut out the envelope and see that it is still all fitting on a 12 by 12 piece of paper, so you don't have to have an extra size uh, mat for this. And then and then when you go to the um, the white liner uh, that's actually the folded pop-out part, uh, you'll see that also fits on a 12 by 12. Now the one thing I wanted to note here for you is that because we have Cricut Explore, when you have this cartridge, you also get the added feature of these cards have a um, have sayings already built into them because we can use insert our pin, it'll prompt us to do that. Let me go back and show you this. So I'm going to say go. Oh, and I have two machines, so I'm going to have to pick the one that I'm going to. So it'll be another second. So what this means is that if you have if you have a Cricut Explorer, you're going to see that that you have the actual. Um, sentiment that Cricut has created that matches that card. This one is the Songbird card, so it says just a little note, which is a play on words for what the image looks like. And if you have this, if you try to use this cartridge in a physical Cricut machine, not a Cricut Explorer, but any of the other ones, you will not have access to the actual sentiment, okay? That was added just specifically for the Explore machine. So just so you know that. Now, when you go to when you go to cut these, notice that it comes up here and it tells me I need to load my I need to put my my scoring stylus in. So it does tell me that, and it, then it tells me to hit go. Okay. So I'm going to let it go through the process. It's going to hit go. I hit go. Now what it's doing is that it is scoring the project for me. And it's cutting out, it's going to cut out the basic shape of the card. Now, notice that it changed because we're adding the words. So now I'm going to take my, my score pen out of my holder and I'm going to add in whatever pen I'm going to use into the accessory clamp. All right? So once I do that, then it is actually going to go in and it's going to write that just a little note onto our project. All right, so you know that. Just be just be mindful when you're working with these pop-up cards that if you're using the Explorer, you have the option to add that sentiment, and and it'll automatically do it, and it'll automatically prompt you to add the score tool, and automatically prompt you to to use the pen. So make sure you're doing that. Now the the other thing that I wanted to show you, I'm canceling the cut. All right. So if you decide you do not want, you want to write your own, maybe you want to put a stamp here or you just want to handwrite a note on here or whatever, you can just go to where it shows that it's the pen writing and, and mark that, just turn the eye off by clicking on it and see that it took the, um, the writing off of it. So now when you go to cut it, 
it's just going to cut the liners and the in the shape out for you and it's not going to ask and score it for you but it won't ask you to insert the pen all right so that's how you use the simple pop-up card cartridge this holds true for any of the the 30 cartridge the 30 uh, cards that are on here and I just wanted to show you that and then I'm going to show you part two of the video. I'm going to show you how I you put this card together so that then you can um, know how you would complete a finished card. Hey everybody, it's Debbie O'Neill. I'm back with the second half of this video where I'm going to show you after you get your um, simple pop-up card set up to cut properly in Cricut Design Space, then what do you do with them after you have them cut out? <laughs> um, some people have never done pop-up cards before and it's a little confusing for them, so I was asked if I would make a video about this and so I am happy to do so. Um, as you can see, I have, using that same one that I showed you how to size it, I have now cut out the two pieces and a few tools that you'll need to be able to do this is if for some reason you don't already have a Cricut Explore um, score tool, you need to make sure you get one of these. That is what uh, you use in the A size. Let me see if I can show you. That is what you use on the A size of your explore to do the um, scoring okay that is also where you insert your pen goes in here as well all right so you want to make sure that you have the score tool if you don't have a score tool I'll add a link to the score tools in my uh, video description just to make sure you know that you're getting the right thing um, Alright, so I have the I have cut the cards out. Now, for this particular card, I wanted to give you another tip. This is the liner that's going to go on top of the the outside of the card, which is going to create the, the pop-up for us here in a minute. But this has lots of small, even sized at five inches by I mean seven inches by five and by ten inches this way. Okay, so five inches this way, here, it was five inches this way and it was ten inches, you know, the, the length of it. These are kind of little sharp points on some of these, like the stars and so forth, and I find it handy to have my um, Cricut, it's the, it's the hook tool that I use for when I'm doing vinyl work. And it works great for helping me pop out some of these little teeny tiny pieces and make sure I get up in here into the points so that these come out cleanly. Now, the other tip that I have for you is that I always push through and not up. And the reason why I do that is I want to make sure, <coughs> excuse me, I want to make sure that when I push down, it's pulling the paper fibers on this on the opposite side of the paper than what's going to be showing so then I have a nice clean edge alright sometimes people are uh, popping their pieces up and they're pulling them towards them when you do that you have you take a chance that if any of those fibers are not cleanly cut for whatever reason um, you're going to get a little ragged edge on the side of your um, of these and it's in it's particularly hard when you have these real fine little pieces, little points on your image. So that's just a tip that, that I have for you. Um, I use this tool all the time, so this is one that I make sure that I always have. In fact, I have two of them um, so that I, if I misplace one, I have an extra. <laughs> that's just me, though. Um, all right, so now you have your, your piece that goes inside the liner, so you're going to take your liner... This is the outside of the card, actually. You're going to take the outside of your card, and you've already used the score tool, and you've scored a line. So you want to fold this in half, and you want to get a nice edge on it, okay? 
So I have this folded in half, and then I'm going to open this up, and I'm just going to set this off to the side for a second. Now, I'm going to take this piece. This piece also has a score line on it in the middle of the card where it's going to fold, but it also has these cuts, right? So I very carefully want to make sure I pop these cuts up. I'm going to fold this card in, and I'm going to fold on those fold lines, okay? So, and I want to make sure I get a nice fold. So usually I just use my fingernails. If you want, you can use a bone folder and make it a little bit sharper if you want. I have long nails, so that usually works pretty good for me for this. Um, the next thing you're going to notice is that there are two fold lines for this card here and here. That's what's going to make this bird stand up in your card. So you also want to fold that edge and also this edge. Okay? So now, so now when the card is opened, this actually, the bird's going to stand up. So see how this is folded down? So it created like a little bridge here from the back piece over to the bird. All right. So now the bird will stand up. So you see now the bird looks 3D against the back. All right. So this piece will then go inside this liner, the outside of the card, okay, and you're going to glue this down so that when you open up your card, it will, it will pop up for you, okay? So here's the card, and I'm popping it up, and there's my bird standing there, all right? Let me show you the finished one. Oh, so I, I actually wanted to tell you guys something. On this particular card, remember how I showed you that with the Cricut Explorer, it already has, it already says on this particular card, it says just a little note, all right? The just a little note is something that I showed you where you could click that off if you decide you don't want that on there. I made one card like this and I wanted to write the just a little note on it. When I, before I sent this to, uh, when, before I hit go to cut this one, I just clicked that eyeball in Design Space and turned that off. So then it never prompted me to put the pen in to, to print that. Because this way I can either write my own note here or I can add my own stamped sentiment or whatever I want. So I wanted to show you the difference in that. Now, the other thing is... I wanted to show I wanted to share with you what pen I used okay this look how nice that looks it looks really good doesn't it okay um, this is a precision pen by American crafts and you can buy them at the craft stores and they are they come in sets and they're the uh, project life pens okay so if you've seen those project life journaling pens because they're American craft pens and they're the right size, then they fit in the Cricut Explorer. Now, if you buy a pack of them, they're going to come, they come with um, different points on them. If you can see here, this one says 05, and I think there's a 01 and a 00. This is the 05 that I used for this particular card. I've used the other ones before, but this one just gives me a nice bold print. So I wanted to tell you about that. Now, I do use, to put to adhere the cards together, I do use my Zig 2A glue pen that I've shown you guys before, okay? That's a Zig 2A glue pen, and I use a tape runner, all right? Now, what I find to be helpful is to add my glue to the top part of the card first, okay? So I'm going to add, I'm going to add some adhesive and I'm just going to do this real quick here and I'm just adding it where I think that I want to make sure that that card is stuck down okay this is not rocket science I'm just putting it where I think it needs to be this is the top part of the card if I'm concerned about any of these of these spots not adhering well I will use my um, my zig two way and go in and just kind of tap it and add a little bit more glue around these cutout images just so that I know that they're going to adhere okay. Okay, as you can see I'm just pouncing and it's just adding a small amount of glue just so that those are going to stick down nicely for me and I'm just pouncing around the shape a little bit. Okay, 
Now, the next thing I do is I'm going to take the, this is the card piece, right, the, the card um, shape, the card background. This is the liner. Now I'm going to fold that back along where the image is, and you see there where my adhesive is on this side. I'm going to line this up where my fold is on this card, and then I'm going to just fold this over. And I had this upside down, that's why. Okay, so I'm going to line this up. And I'm going to get this so it's centered, and then I'm going to fold my card over. Okay, and now I have my liner is attached on the top around the edges of my card. Okay, and then I'm going to flip this side up and add my adhesive on this side. And I'll add that on here. And now I have, now my card, no, I, sorry, that was me. I put my thumb in it. <laughs> um, and now I have my card lined up, and it opens up, and the, and the bird pops up. Okay, so the card's folded, pops up. Um, let me show you. Here is the finished version. And what I did is when you have your card and you put the inside piece on here, right, to do the pop-up, okay, there's the pop-up. Um, when you fold this card over, it's just cardstock. <laughs> it is not pretty. You do not see anything beautiful there. So what I did was I cut a piece of uh, pattern paper that matched my cardstock I used for the background and just adhered that to the front and then I put a sentiment here. Um, so that way you could match that up, but then that way you have a nice finished card that on the when you when they receive it, they see how nice the card is. And then when they open it up, look they have the surprise of the card of the of the bird popping up at them. It's so cute. I really love this card. I just thought it was adorable. Um, all the cards are really cute in my opinion, but um, I've never met a card I didn't like, I don't think. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you guys is here is the envelope, the matching envelope that comes with this. Okay, so here is the card, the envelope that matched that card. Remember when we sized all that together. So what you're going to do is it's going to have score lines on here, and you're going to fold it along those score lines. Okay, so you're going to fold that up, so then you're going to create your envelope that matches. Alright, you're going to add a little bit of adhesive along these, and I just usually, usually, usually use a tape runner for this, and just do it along the edges, and then I fold my card up. And then, now I have my envelope. Okay, so my envelope's done, it's nice and secure, and um, my card fits in here perfectly. And I'm ready to um, to get this out. Now, other people ask me all the time about, well, how do I seal my envelopes if I'm going to be mailing them? Okay, I have this lick and stick glue that I use on any of my uh, envelopes that I make with my Cricut. I think you can just get this online. I bought it at the Paper Source, um, but it's and it was like $3.95. It's repositionable envelope glue. And what this does, let me take this out of there. Um, it actually is a sticky glue, and you just add it to the top of your card, or to your envelope, just like where the adhesive would be if you did a store-bought a store-bought envelope. Can you guys see that? I don't know if you can see that because it's white, um, but it's a clear glue, and I'm and I just put some on here. I just kind of squeeze it on there like this, okay. And then I let this dry, and it needs to dry completely, and usually I'll just set this off to the side while I'm working on something else. Once this is dry, then it becomes where you can lick it or moisten it with a, you know, a, a damp sponge or something, and then it actually seals, just like a store-bought card would be. Okay, so that's, that's how I do that, and it was called Lick and Stick. 
And there's another brand that I know that I've seen at like the office supply stores. So you can take a look at that and see what you find. My other alternative, of course, is that I just um, close it and put washi tape on it. <laughs> um, and the washi tape will hold it down. Or if I'm really worried about it, if it's going a long way, I'll put clear tape on it and then I'll put the washi tape over it just to make sure the washi tape doesn't come up. But anyway, so that is how you um, work with find work find the uh, simple pop-up cards in Cricut Design Space. How do you size them in Cricut Design Space? And also then how do you put them together and how do you finish them so that then you have a beautiful finished card when you're done uh, creating them. So I hope you found this useful. Um, if you are not a member of our Let's Learn Cricut Explore Facebook group, please come join us over there where we have a lot of fun learning how to use our Cricut Explore and sharing our projects with each other. Um, you can find me at scrapmequickdesigns.com and uh, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment. I really appreciate it if you like my video and you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye.